Hey everybody, my name is Allison Jensen and I'm the owner of Orange Easel School of Art. I want to talk to you today about the hand-painted wood signs that we're making this month for our Arts and Crafts Night. So the first step in creating our sign was to design out the text. I did this on the computer. Some people do hand lettering and they're able to draw their own font. I personally like to see how everything's going to lay out on a computer and then I transfer it onto the wood. So I use a publishing program, I just use Microsoft Publisher. You could do the same thing in Word. Um, my document, let me see if I can bring it up here and I'll show you what it looks like. Our wood that we're using is cut to 12 by 18. Um, it's just the easiest dimensions that it worked for us for a, um, well, for profit. We are a for-profit business. <laughs> So, so ours are 12 by 18. You can do this at any size. The important thing is that you want to change your paper size in your publishing program to match your wood size. So that way as you're designing everything, when it prints out, it prints to scale. So let's bring up the one that we used and I'll show you what it looks like. So I have a number of different quotes here that I used and if I click up here to page design, Let's see if it will tell me, whoops, that's not it. Ha ha ha. Size wise, we are in um, a 12 by 18 piece of paper and, and our boards are 12 by 18 so it works out just perfectly. If you needed a custom size, you would just, in Microsoft Publisher anyway, you could come down here and just do create a new page size and it will let you change it. Once we had the page sizes set, I used, um, I actually used Word, uh, Word Art, right? Insert Word Art right here. And this is the one I always pick because it has no shadow in it. So if we just do insert text here, see it right here? I bring it over here so it doesn't mess up my, my design thing. Or, and I can make it as big as I want. Um, unlike just entering in a text box, by using word art, I can make everything longer and taller and shorter and squishier and whatever. And then I, I went ahead and I can fill it with no fill and just outline it in the black. That way I don't use a, a bunch of ink when I go to print. If I had just inserted a text box, then the text would be filled with black ink and, and I would be wasting ink. In order to change the font on Word Art, it's up here. So, you know, I can make this any, any kind of font that I want. So, see, it says all sorts of fun things. So it's from scripts to, um, to blocks and serifs and sans serifs and all sorts of fun things. So once you start playing with all of this, see, and you can shrink it. So you can see here I used a, a script and then here I used a block. So the first step is to design it all, for us anyway, design it all on the computer. These are some of the templates that we have. So we have the Land of the Free and the Home of the Brave for our 4th of July one. We have You Are My Sunshine, which is the one that I'm going to be making. And then we have Love You to the Moon and Back. So, And you can see here I actually just inserted a shape because I wanted to be able to put the moon in our picture. All right, so these are ready to go. And I went ahead and printed them. And we're going to move on to the next step. <laughs> All right, hey guys. All right, so the next step, we've got all of our pages here that have printed out. And look at this, like, it doesn't print out in one page, it prints out in four pages, because I don't have a printer that prints, you know, 12 by 18. And so I've got four pages to put together. And then um, this part I did not show you, but these are our boards. We bought um, just a, it's a, I don't know, it was a big board that we bought and cut into pieces. I went ahead and I've stained it. This is like an espresso stain. I, I only did one coat, so it's really not too dark. And then I went ahead and painted my edges, just a fun green color, because I knew kind of my design choice that I wanted for lettering. You can also stain the edges if you wanted to. I chose not to because um, the cut edges, they don't stain as well as the front. So I went ahead and I figured that the paint looked really well. So we can add, at the end, we'll add a sawtooth to the back. So. You can hang it on the wall. You can also lean it up on a mantle. So that is here, and then this is my next step, and it's going to be as simple as lining up all of my text, and I'm going to use 
use double-sided tape to put this together. I'm going to need a pair of scissors and I will show you what that looks like. All right, so here is our papers all just, they're kind of lined up. They're not, they're not, whoops, that's a shaky camera. Goodness, hold on to that. They're not glued together or taped together yet. They're just lined up. Notice that there is a white, like our, um, our lines don't go all the way to the edge of the paper because our printer can't, it can't print off the edge. It can't print a bleed like that. So I'm going to trim the edge on one of these so that I can lay it over the top and line up all of those lines. And then we'll use a double-sided tape to go ahead and put this together and make it one piece. Once I finish that, I will trim around the outside so that way that it can sit on that board. All right, so the technique that we're going to use to transfer our text onto our board is um, similar to carbon paper. So that old school carbon copy paper, we're going to do that technique, only we're going to do it without actually using carbon paper. I've got um, ebony pencils. This works just as well with a regular pencil. This is what I have, um, and they're a little bit softer lead, so they're, they're easier for me to cover the surface. All I'm going to do, I'm going to move my board off to the side here for just a second, because I don't quite need it yet. Um, but I'm going to use my paper. And on the back of my paper, I'm going to color. Um, I'm really going to target my coloring right where the lines are for my text. So I don't need to cover the whole thing, but we'll, and you'll see why. But I do need to cover a nice dark graphite or lead or whatever we're using, or charcoal, although charcoal gets kind of messy, um, right around... Let's see, this is for the Y. See, so I have that all colored. From the, from the front, you can probably kind of see through it. Um, and that's, that's all we need to do. So I'm going to do that over the back of this paper. I'm going to do it in all the different letters. As you can see, we have our template all taped down and we're ready to transfer it onto the board. All right, so our next step is to transfer it onto the wood because we want to paint on the wood, not on the paper. And this is gonna get all of our lettering outlined on the wood for us so that way we can paint it in. To do this, I'm gonna use an ebony pencil that I've sharpened really well. Um, you can use any pencil. Um, a mechanical pencil works really well because as this gets dull, I'm going to have to go over and resharpen it. But if I had a mechanical pencil, I wouldn't have to. You can also use even just a ballpoint pen. And all I'm going to do, I make sure my hands are fairly steady, so lay off the coffee on the mornings that you do this, and I'm going to trace all the letters. So if you can trace a straight line, you can make these signs. So all you're going to do is right over the top of the printed text, you're going to run your pencil, and you don't have to push exceptionally hard, but you do want to make sure you're applying some pressure. And all that is doing is, because we've got that layer of graphite in between the paper and the wood, right, because we colored the back of our paper, all that's doing is transferring, where I push, it's transferring that graphite down onto the wood. So when I lift up my papers, I will have pencil lines that have my text outlined. You want to take your time doing this because this is going to be the lines that you're going to paint. So if you don't do a good job of tracing, then your painting, um, your painting will only be as good as your tracing is.
Okay, so I just finished tracing all of my letters and I've pulled my paper off gently. I, I did manage to tear one corner of it. You can reuse this template. Say you wanted to mass produce these signs. You can re reuse it. You may want to go back through just really quick with your pencil just to make sure that it's gonna transfer again the second time through, but then at least you wouldn't have all the taping and cutting to do. So all of my um, pencil marks here, if you can see, they have transferred onto the board. It says, you are my sunshine. And now it's ready to paint. Let me see if you can get a closer look. I'll see if I can. So we're ready to paint. I've got water. And I'm going to set everything to my right because I'm right-handed and I don't want to drip over the board when I reach over to fill my brush, right? I don't want to accidentally drip because it's not going to come off of this. So I'm using two brushes. This is a flat brush and I will use it to fill in some of the black letters. It gets a nice crisp edge when I go down. And then this one here, this is um, a little bit more like um, a liner brush. It's not quite a liner brush, but it's got a tip to it. And that will help with some of my script letters as well as some of the smaller areas to fill in. So I have two brushes here. I always want to have a jar of water to wash. This is my paint palette and then a paper towel to wipe because I don't want my paint too runny. I am using just craft acrylic paint. So a um, couple different colors. This is a light orange I'm going to use for the word sunshine. The coral I'm going to use for the word you. The, um, the antique white or the vanilla is going to be are my. And then the gold is just an accent color. It is, it's actually bright gold. Um, there's a king's gold too that is really pretty. So both of those would work. Um, and I'm just going to put that in kind of throughout for a little bit of shimmer. So. Acrylic paint dries really fast. So I'm only going to put out the color that I'm working with. Otherwise, by the time I get down the board, they'll all be dry. And that's a waste of paint. So again, um, in case you didn't know, acrylic paint is not washable, so you don't want to get it on you. And you don't need very much paint at all to paint these. So I'm going to get started. So I'm being really careful on my lines. There's really not much margin for error here, so I want to make sure you do the best job you can staying inside your lines. This is a paint inside the box type of activity. Those of you Jackson Pollock people, you, you may find this kind of annoying. The good thing about it is if you mess up, we're gonna do some distressing on this sign. So hopefully, hopefully it doesn't show up. <laughs> you could just make that an extra distressed part if you have a line that's kind of wiggly. Um, I make sure that my brush has a decent amount of paint on it, but not too much. So that way I just make one mark nice and smooth. Um, let me see if I can pull this closer. So you can get a, a good sense of how I'm painting. So I've gone along this side, pulling it down. But you'll see I haven't done the other side yet. In order to do that, I'm going to turn my board around and I'm going to work from this angle. So that way my brush pulls to the middle each time. You'll also notice I have my hand resting. If I try to do this in the air, it would not be pretty. So always find a place to brace your hand, not inside the paint though. Anyone who's good at painting your nails, this will make sense to you because it's very similar. So just a stroke. The brush makes a big difference. It makes it very easy to get a nice, straight, crisp line because you just line it up against that pencil mark and pull. And then this, the serif is about the same. If for some reason it wasn't, I would use my, my smaller brush to fill it in, which you'll see when I get to... <laughs> when I get to the script. Now my coral didn't quite cover um, all of the espresso stain. You can see the wood through it. 
after it dries, if I decide that that's not be the way I want it to look, then I will go back through and do another coat. It just depends. It's what happens when you paint with light colors. And the Y is done. One letter. Moving on to the next. All right, so our first coat of coral is done. Check it out. See? Look, so the word U took me about seven minutes to paint. It's obviously going to need a second coat so that we can get that nice bright color um, and not see the brush strokes quite so much. I want to talk to people who maybe are freaked out by painting. If this freaks you out, or this, go get some of those paint markers and, and use a paint pen instead of a brush. And, and you'll have a little bit more control and it'll be a more familiar tool to you because, I mean, you know how to use a marker. You're good with that. All right, all right, we're gonna keep moving on. I'm gonna switch to my antique white for the script letters, and I'm gonna switch my brush. Okay, as you saw, I used my liner brush to go ahead and outline my script letters. So I like to do that first, and then, and this is just for script. For the black letters, I used my big, nice flat brush like this. But for my script letters, I outline with my liner brush, and then I'm gonna use a different flat brush that one to kind of go in and fill in all of the areas here I can fill it in with the same brush that I used to outline but it would take me a lot longer um, and the nice thing about the outline is, is it just gives me um, gives me a little bit more room to mess up I suppose <laughs> Ready? Okay, so uh, most of the day has gone by, and off and on, I have worked on my sign here. And so I think I've got it. It took two coats of the coral and the, the light orange -y sherbet color. So I've got my, my letters all painted in. You can see I added just a little bit of gold to the um, vanilla off antique -y white color. So um, I, I dig the way it looks, don't you? Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna let it dry really good and then I'm gonna take a sander to it and we're gonna distress it. But if you liked it just like this, you could leave it and it could be perfectly done. We're gonna take it one step further. All right, so now we're out here on the patio and I have my, my mouse sander here. My science paint is all dry and I'm going to sand this down just a little bit to distress it. take that inside and wipe it down really good and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> 